This week at Starbase, Ship 37 gets some flaps, quick disconnect hardware is installed at Pad B, Booster 13's aft section returns to Starbase, and SpaceX continues pushing the Starship program forward at a blinding pace. With so many moving pieces and such a rapid pace of development, what's SpaceX's plan for transitioning from Starship Block 2 to Block 3? Well, let's dig into this week's update and find out. This week at Starbase, crews attach the forward and aft flaps to Starship 37 as SpaceX continues its push toward Flight 10, targeting the launch date sometime next month. SpaceX has had a difficult time with the Block 2 ships. The first two were lost in flight, the third lost control during its coast phase and eventually burned up during re-entry, and most recently Ship 36 was lost during ground testing for Flight 10. Despite these setbacks, the company is pushing on to the fourth flight of Block 2 Starships with only one potential flight after that before the design is retired and replaced with the new Block 3 ships and boosters. Moving on to take a look at launch site construction, with only two remaining Block 2 ships left, crews are working day and night to bring Pad B online, which is purpose-built for the new Block 3 ships and boosters. With the launch table's assembly complete now, construction crews began installing the booster quick disconnect hardware at the pad. The fuel side hardware was brought to the launch pad first, and the quick disconnect assembly was quickly installed on the launch mount, followed by its armored protective hood. With the fuel supply hardware in place, the second booster quick disconnect assembly, this one for liquid oxygen, was brought in and installed on the launch mount. Since there's no protective hood over the LOX QD assembly yet, we got a good look at the four bar linkage that extends and retracts the interface panel and the supply lines. At liftoff, the lines and panels are pulled back inside an armored hood before a door covers them, protecting the propellant infrastructure during liftoff. A large amount of concrete was poured at the launch site's main entrance, building up the new footings for blast walls, foundations for storage tanks, and other infrastructure at the launch site. Work also continues on the improvised ship quick disconnect on the pad A launch mount, with crews running pipes throughout the back of the booster quick disconnect hood as they prepare the pad for a static fire test with Starship 37. Over by the pumping station, two liquid oxygen pipes apparently didn't pass testing and were pulled out of the farm and taken off site. Moving over to the Massey outpost, while the ship's static fire infrastructure is out of commission, hardware installation continued on the test cage surrounding test article B18.1. Heading back over to the launch site to look into testing that was done this week, we saw that the expanded tank farm and deluge systems continue being tested ahead of commissioning as crews continue the push to bring Pad B online. Testing activity was observed at the LN2 vents for the deluge system as well as the vertical nitrogen tanks near the pumping station. In other development news, Elon confirmed this week that another drive-in Tesla diner, like the one recently opened in Los Angeles, will be built in Starbase and will be open to the public. Over at the build site, scaffolding was pulled out from around Ship 38. It remains to be seen if SpaceX will launch this final Block 2 Starship, or if it will only be served as a systems testbed before being retired. The underwater salvage ship LB Jill returned to the port of Brownsville on Tuesday with the aft section of Booster 13 on deck. Two days later, the engine section was brought to the Massey outpost for examination. Booster 13, which diverted into the Gulf after the catch was aborted on Flight 6, has been underwater since November. Across the street from the launch complex, construction and groundwork began on SpaceX's new air separation plant. The plant will liquefy and separate air, producing liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen for Starship launches. Also announced this week, Elon has stated that he'll be giving a technical update ahead of Flight 10, where he'll discuss engineering design and future plans for the Starship program. Along with the announcement, a new render was also released of Space Launch Complex 37, showing SpaceX's plans for two launch pads at the former Delta IV complex. Moving on to the Falcon 9 operations this week, we saw the launch and recovery of the O3B M Power 9 and 10 satellites for SES. Fairing recovery and landing support ships headed out to sea ahead of launch, which lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 on the 22nd. Falcon 9 Booster 1090 successfully lofted the satellites into space before landing downrange on Just Read the Instructions. Bob made a successful return to port two days later with both fairing halves from the launch. 
The next day on the opposite coast, Booster 1080 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 4E in Vandenberg, carrying NASA's Tracers mission into low Earth orbit before making a return to the launch site landing. The Tracers mission is designed to study magnetic reconnection from the solar wind and its effects on the Earth's atmosphere at the North and South Poles. Also tagging along for the ride were Seops's Epic Athena, Skycraft Skycraft 4, Maverick Space Systems Real, Tyvax Lied, and York Space Systems Barred Spacecraft. Crew Dragon Endeavor arrived at the Horizontal Integration Facility at Launch Complex 39A on Thursday, ahead of the Crew 11 launch to the International Space Station. SpaceX Crew 11 is expected to lift off on July 31st at 12.09 p.m. Eastern for a six-month stay at the station. In other space news this week, Vast Space opened its new headquarters and Mission Control Center for space station operations in Long Beach. Nord Space, a private Canadian launch startup, broke ground on Space Launch Complex 2 at their Atlantic Spaceport Complex. Blue Origin announced the crew of the new Shepard 34. The company will fly RV Bahal, Gokhan Erdem, Debra Martorell, Lionel Pitchford, J.D. Russell, and H.E. Justin Sun past the Kármán line and into space. Two NASA satellites also arrived at Astrotech Space Operations in Florida ahead of their trip to space. Carruthers Geocoronal Observatory was delivered alongside the Space Weather Follow-On L1 satellite. SWFOL1, Glide, and IMAP will all launch together on a Falcon 9 in September. Astra showed off a hot fire test of the main engine for their first stage of Rocket 4, the successor to their Rocket 3 launch vehicle, which is designed to carry up to 600 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Axiom Space has acquired the Raffaello Multi Purpose Logistics Module from NASA as part of their development work on their space station. The MPLM flew on the space shuttle, delivering supplies and equipment to the ISS from 2001 to 2011. Airbus has also shipped the Sentinel-6B climate monitoring satellite from Germany to Vandenberg for final checkouts before its scheduled launch in November on a Falcon 9 rocket. Ahead of testing, Firefly Aerospace showed off the liquid oxygen transfer line for their upcoming Eclipse launch vehicle, which is being developed in partnership with Northrop Grumman. The Eclipse is the successor to Northrop Grumman's Antares launch vehicle and will launch from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp shared a picture of Blue Moon Mark 1's mid-module covered in spray-on foam insulation taken from inside their surface coating facility. Blue Moon Mark 1 is the company's entry for supply missions to the lunar surface seen here between the Apollo Lunar Lander and Blue Moon Mark 2 crew lander. The mid-module is a liquid hydrogen tank providing fuel for the cargo lander's BE-7 engine. United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno shared photos from the topping out ceremony, complete with a traditional fir tree at Vulcan Vehicle Integration Facility A in Florida. To accommodate the larger Vulcan rocket, the VIF's roof was raised 45 feet, giving them the space they need to integrate future payloads in their newest rocket. Rocket Lab's LC-3 at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport is nearing completion now and will officially open next month. This new launch complex will support the Neutron rocket, which is tentatively scheduled for its first flight sometime later this year. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.